Are you ready to customize your student dashboard in Thinkific? Let's have a look at what you can do and some little tips and hints. Before we do, my name is Kat Sabello from The Stellar Way, and I'm an instructional designer here to help you design, create, and launch your online course. Each week, there's a new video here on my YouTube channel, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you are notified of new course creation content. So let's have a look at my dashboard in Thinkific. This is my test account to play around with, so let's go and play. What we're going to look at is creating your student dashboard. So when you go in to design your site, you then have access to your site pages. So when you go into here, what you would see first is your course pages, your home page, your courses, and all of the different types of pages that you have. Then there are default pages. So underneath the default pages, you would also see your student dashboard. Now you can also get to these default pages. For example, let's say that you are in one of your pages, playing around, testing around in your home page here, for example, and you're creating your website. On the top here, you can also drop down the list and you would see all of your default pages. So you don't have to always go back to that main page to move between pages. You can do it here as well. So let's have a look at the student dashboard. Now on this student dashboard, there are only four types of sections you can add. So you have your default section. The default section is your courses that appear here. And then underneath these courses, you can start to add new areas. And those new areas, there's four different sections, sorry, five different, six different sections. You can add additional products. You can add a banner. You can add a call to action that has a button. You can add frequently asked questions or a video or a countdown timer. So they are pretty self-explanatory. These additional products are from your course pages. These, this banner with a CTA and call to action, while they might seem similar, the banner, think of that as like your title page where you can have background images and it's kind of, it's, it's a lot larger. And it doesn't need to have a button. Whereas your call to action is a call to action that does have a button or you can create the whole area as a clickable area uh, to, to navigate someone to a different page in your website or a different area, whatever it may be. And then you can also set up frequently asked questions, which is like an accordion. So they would have the question and the answer and you can have a list of them. And the video and the countdown time are pretty self-explanatory. Now, what I want to show you is how you can start to customize these. So I'm going to use the banner. The banner or the call to action you can customize quite uh, quite a lot. Now when you go into the banner, you can see that I've added this here and I can either click edit banner or I can click straight on banner. And it then brings me into the banner section so I can start to add or, or re remove things. So you can see that I have three different sections now. There's the headings, which if I drop down that list, you can see that the headings are the banner and the subheading. I can also increase the size and I can change the color. I then can change the background image. I can change where the focus point is and I can put an overlay color. So you can see that there's an image that's quite of a white image with a black overlay. And then finally, I can start to change the size and alignment. So this is pretty customizable, right? You, it's pretty clear how you can customize it, how you can move text around, how you can make it uh, large or small or, or whatever you wish, medium, let's put medium for now. And you can change the background image so you can upload any image that you want to upload. You do have the recommended, recommended pixels here. So if you are creating an image or you are creating a banner, I recommend using Canva. And when you go into Canva, you can select your size. So you can go in and create an, an, a size that's exactly this pixel um, width and height. And then you can change your overlay color. So let's assume that I've downloaded this image from Canva, created in Canva, and then I've uploaded it here, but I want my overlay color to be my colors of my business, which is, which is the hex color. If you don't know the hex color, um, or you know the RGB, you can put that in as well, or you can also always look online and look for the hex or the RGB colors. Okay, so you can see that that overlay, we can then make that um, 
opaque so the opaque is the transparency right the less the less percentage we put here the more transparent it is now that's not what i want to show you too much today what i want to show you more of today is how we can customize this area here now if you are familiar with html you can use html here in your headings and your subheadings you may have noticed that when you're building your lessons, you can look at the source code, which are those two little arrows like this. And in that source code in your lesson text, you can see all the HTML. Now we don't have the same format or the same buttons here where we cannot click on those buttons, the source code buttons, but we can write HTML in. Now I'm not a HTML expert, but I do know some areas. So for example, let me just change my my image here to be a little bit darker so we can see my text. Perfect. So let's say for example that I want the word contains to be bold. I can put the word B and then I want to close that off as well. So you can see that my text, all of my text after that B has gone bold, but I actually only want the word contains, so I'm going to close that off there as well. So you can then see that only contains is bold. Now that's a little bit difficult to see. So let's change the color. Okay, that's a lot easier to see that we can see that bold color there. We can also do the same where we might want to put in a page break. And putting in that page break will bring the, the text to a next line. So we can start to customize what we want it to look like. Now, if you're not familiar with HTML, that's fine. There are many HTML editors online that you can use, such as this online HTML editor.dev, which I love using. Now, let me remove all of that. What you can see here is that you have the source code like what we do have in the lessons. So if I wanted to, for example, take all of my text from here, and then paste it in here. I don't want to have it in bullets. So I'm going to remove those bullets, but I want all of the italics and the bold. So I can customize what I want it to look like here. And then I can go into the edit, edit source code. So just to show you again, I click on the edit HTML source code, which is all of this. And I'm going to copy this. And then I'm simply going to paste it here. And you can see all of that comes across as I've edited it. So very simple. Through my testing, I haven't found that there is an, a limit to the words I can put in. I can, I can put in quite a lot of text, quite a lot of characters. What I like about this section as well, I'm going to play around with something very quickly and show you that what I want to do is actually have these in two columns. Now, I'm, as I said, I'm not familiar with HTML to be able to put in columns, but what I can do is I can put in a table. I can put in a table that has two, one row and two columns, and that has no border, so I don't want any colors. I also want this to be 100% of the page width, or I can say that I want it to be 80% of the page width. And then I have two columns here. And let's say, for example, I want to paste the first bullets in that table and then the other four bullets in this column here like so okay so now I have two columns and I'm just going to delete anything before then so now I have two columns that are tables and this too I can copy that entire source code so you can see that there's a table now that I have with different table rows and different table data and I'm going to copy the whole thing I'm just clicking control C here right so we can also just click copy and then I come into the same area I'm going to select control A to highlight everything and remove everything and then control V to paste it all and then you would see my columns. Now, obviously there's some things to play around with here to make it look better. Maybe I want it to be 100% column width, not 80%, and I don't want a background. So there are some things that I can play around with. But in short, that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you today is how you can use that HTML area in the subheading and how you can start to add HTML 
headings or tags in there to start to customize what your text looks like. So play around with those features and in the comments or in the description below, I will put in the link to the HTML editor that I use to help me be able to customize my HTML because as I said, I'm not an expert in HTML and then I can really customize what's on my dashboards. Remember each week I do post a new video here on YouTube. So if you do have any questions or if you want to see a particular video, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, happy course creating. Bye.